So, after nine years, six release dates, five directors, and multiple criminal charges later, The Flash has finally landed on the big screen to fill our eyeballs with some of the greatest irony of all time. With everything in its way and against all odds, The Flash somehow produces feelings you only get when sitting on a vibrating pillow. So let's sit back and rant about the miracle of a movie that is Andy Muschietti's The Flash. Now to be honest, I never really was a fan of Ezra's Flash. His casting was always strange because everybody around him looked spot on, but then you got this weird jittery motherfucker running around like Phoebe Buffay. So the idea of a two and a half hour movie with this dingleberry at the center did not have me excited. But this movie is the prime example of what happens when somebody knows how to write a character and direct an actor. Cause throughout the movie, I kept getting pleasantly surprised by the emotional moments, comedic timing, and lack of flying hot dogs the Flash was able to devour. And some would say Ezra was able to give two great performances as Barry, but from my point of view, there was one great performance and the other is Ezra playing Ezra. <laughs> ah, my boy Ben. The Batman with the most wasted potential in cinema history. It was bittersweet to see him orchestrate attacks, fly around weightlessly, and deadpool a few jobbers before making his exit. You know, Ben said in interviews he felt like he finally nailed the role, which I will always believe he did in his first appearance, but I agree with him. Every aspect of his short performance was on point, so I'm really sad to see him go, but I do have the ability to move on and enjoy other actors in the role, and that's one skill set I wish fanboys on the internet would acquire, because this man said he's finished, y'all, so leave him be. Just leave this man alone. Leave Ben alone! Ah, Michael Keaton. Michael motherfucking Keaton, dog. The trailers had me so scared they were gonna nostalgia bait his Batman into the soil where the DCEU now lays, but bend me over and tickle me until I pee if this Batman was not the highlight of the movie. I mean, his intelligence was increased, he took control of every situation, and he was also able to come off like he could hold his own in this new world of metahumans, while at the same time being the same age as Betty White in the final season of Golden Girls. His presence in the film never felt forced, and that times felt really necessary. If anything, with this treatment of Ben and Keaton's Batman, in this film showed me Annie Muschietti's Batman Brave and the Bold has the potential to be what we've all been waiting for when it comes to a 100% accurate iteration of classic classic Batman, fantastical elements and all. So please Andy, I'm begging you man, don't let me down. I was gonna get onto the story, but I don't want to ignore Sasha Kai's Supergirl. I honestly thought she was gonna be a bigger part of the movie, but she was really only brought in near the end to throw hands with Zod. I do really appreciate how they incorporated some of the storylines from the original Flashpoint where we find her malnourished and held captive in a kryptonite cell. But other than that, there's not much there because after the Batman and the binaries free her from her cell, she gets a steroid injection from the sun, fights Zod, and then gets clapped and soul sucked multiple times. One thing I can say that I do appreciate overall is they didn't have her shit on Superman because his chromosomes are XY. He was who she cared about the most and continued to speak fondly of him and her home. She brought honor to that symbol of hope she wore on her chest by giving her life to get justice for the last son of Krypton. You know, I never thought I'd say this, but Marvel, take notes from DC because we all know how you handled this situation. It is ma'am! Okay, here we are, the meat and potatoes of this whole thing, the story. Now overall, from a simplistic perspective, The Flash is the superhero version of Back to the Future. And I don't mean that in a bad way, the movie even references those movies, so I think it's pretty self-aware. Where it differs though, is the time travel and how actions in the past can't only affect your future universe, but every other universe also. The spaghetti analogy is probably my favorite because it makes the most sense. If you change something in your world, then that creates a hole in your universe that another universe fills with an aspect of itself, which in return creates a hole in itself and that cycle repeats until every universe just crashes into each other. Either destroying everything in existence or in my head canon would create one new super earth. Either way, it's probably my favorite use of time travel in a movie just because it seems limitless. Now, the emotional journey older Barry and even younger Barry go through throughout the movie is pretty well done in my book. Older Barry's motivations are understandable because he's freaking weird, he doesn't have any friends, he sucks at his job, his dad is in prison, his mom's dead, and he's the Justice League's janitor. So if someone like that had the power to time travel in order to fix their life, it's understandable that that person would take that opportunity. And younger Barry is equally as understandable because imagine you're an 18 year old going about your life, enjoying your day, and jigging on your way home with a laundry bag full of crusty socks, when bang, out of nowhere, this other version of you comes into your life, destroying the fabric of your reality. Then the douchebag gets you electrocuted with benefits, continuously screams at you, and shits on you every chance he gets. Then that same eggplant tells you later your mom and this alien that you've known for 10 minutes has to die and you're like nah bro, fuck that. 
Hold my beer. I think anybody was snapping that situation, which leads us all to the end where Barry has his interaction with Dark Flash. And while I don't hate what they did here in this scene, I do also think it was lacking impact due to the fact we only saw Dark Flash once before this scene. The reason I love the animated Flashpoint is because just like this movie, there's an evil Flash, but the animated one has way more impact on the plot and shows up periodically throughout the movie. This one just shows up in the beginning and he's like, yeah, bitch, and then disappears until the end. And older Barry barely even cares. He brings it up once and then he's like, whatever about it. And I actually like whenever Dark Flash was introduced because when he popped up, I was like, hey, yo, who's this motherfucker? He's creepy, but then that's it. But it would have been cool to see him show up and influence things in the background while slowly luring his younger self to the dark side. Because that ending scene would have hit way harder if he was integrated more into the story. But that and the effects are my only real gripes in the film. Even the lack of knowledge of Barry's mom's killer really doesn't bother me because I didn't see that as the point of the story. The point was for Barry to learn a lesson and choose to finally let go of what's always held him back, which he evidently does not learn when he does what he does to get his father exonerated. But whether he learned it or not, his mother's killer's identity holds no relevancy in said lesson. And lastly, I have to address the ending scene with George Clooney's Bruce Wayne. The reaction to this is very surprising to me because I thought what happened here was pretty clear. You know, if I'm wrong and this doesn't happen to be the case, I'll take that L, but here we go. So we all know that James Gunn is creating a new universe with mostly recasted characters with the exception of a few. Out of all those recasted characters, Batman is definitely going to be one of them and George Clooney showing up at the end of this movie is evidence of that. This is due to James Gunn replying to a tweet about if Clooney would be his new Batman with a very direct, absolutely not. So what this scene is saying is, yo, you remember that Batman that nobody ever wants to see again? Well, we're going to make him the Batman of the Flash that we never want to associate with again so we can bring marketability and profitability back to the character whenever it gets recasted. TLDR, one actor's real-life actions caused a fictional character to be locked in cinema prison alongside a dude with bad nipples. 7 out of 10.